In this video, I will show you how to make an API site which uses Identity Server 4 for authentication. Let's start by creating a new Visual Studio solution. This is a new project. We'll choose the .NET Framework, ASP.NET Core Web Application .NET Framework. Let's call it Client API. And we'll just save it on the desktop. Let's just choose API, since that's the only one we are concerned with right now. Once all the packages restore, let's run it and uh, see what we actually see. So the starter site which Visual Studio gives us is API slash values. So let's put an authorize authorize attribute on it and try to go there again hit f5 obviously it doesn't work because we put an authorized attribute on it and uh, the API wants some kind of an authorization on it. If you want to be, re if you want to see the HTTP status code, you can always go in here, go to Postman. A new one. Let's start, client API is running, so that's okay. So let's visit it and we get a 401 unauthorized. To add Identity Server 4 authorization to it, all we need to do is add one package. Let's go to project.json and add Identity Server 4. Dot access to validation the latest seems to be rc5 once that's restored go to startup.cs once we're in the startup.cs we need to configure identity server so we say app dot use identity server authentication and we do new identity server options and then we need to configure where the identity server is authority is equal to um, from our previous videos we see our identity server runs on localhost 5334 so let's copy that Let's leave it running also. And then we copy paste that uh, identity server URL there. And then let's give it our API name, which is API1. Once that is done, we can also say, because this is testing, we, we can also say things like we don't need HTTPS. So, so, yeah, let's see. Let's run it right now. See what happens. Remember, we got a 401 unauthorized before because we didn't configure any authentication. So, the API site is up still doesn't really work because we're not giving it any authorization. Let's replicate that uh, once again in uh, 
uh, Postman, even though we wired up the identity server, we wired up the API to use identity server, we are not really giving it any header. So let's just send, hit send on the api.values. Um, it's giving me uh, one of one, 101 unauthorized HTTP um, code. So in order to get the APIs working, we need to um, give it the access token. So next, let's see how we can um, give this API an access token so that it can authenticate us. From previous videos, we've seen how to request uh, request a token from identity server. So uh, let's do that again. So we have identity server running. And then in Postman, I have uh, saved my old request. And uh, let's just hit send, see if that works. Mm, invalid scope, let me quickly fix that. It's actually API one, okay. Let me just request it again. So we got this token. So we need to, when we request the API um, from a client, in this case Postman, we need to send this access token to the API. So let's see. Let's try to get that working. So, so what we need to do is the URL is localhost 5550. So HTTP localhost colon 555. Okay, so that's the URL there. You see it doesn't work. So all we need to do here is to the request header, we just need to add something called authorization and then we have to use this keyword called B bearer B E A R E R and just copy paste our um, access token which we got from the identity server and next let's uh, try hit send and see what happens for some reason I'm still getting an error so from my research I think there have been some breaking changes. So I'm usually used to um, just doing RC3 instead of RC5. So let's try that and see if that works. So I'm gonna wait for it to restore. So instead of that, when we go back to startup, instead of API name, uh, let me just use scope, scope name, just like that and uh, I'm gonna see if that works. So I'm gonna start up client API again. Once it runs, let me open up uh, Postman again and see if that works. Yeah, so so yeah, so there, there seems to be a slight difference between uh, RC3, maybe even RC4 and 5. Um, so in a future video, I will cover everything with the latest identity server. For for now, just uh, I would advise just use RC3. Um, and uh, to, yeah, so just to recap, we, all we had to do was uh, add this keyword bearer because it's, uh, remember it, this the token we get is of bearer type, uh, token type is bearer. So we just have to put in an authorization header with bearer keyword and just um, put the token there and uh, that's sh that's good enough for the API. The authorized attribute will uh, um, <clears throat> take care of the rest because we already wired up um, all the identity server settings. So obviously we don't use Postman um, <laughs> to do our um, API calls. So we'll uh, in the next video I will show you how to actually um, do a client call, let's uh, maybe we'll call API slash values using some uh, C sharp code in another, uh, maybe uh, a MVC application. So using HTTP client class. Um, so, so that will be the next video. Anyway, uh, up till then, thanks for watching. See you again in my next video. Thank you.